Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to build this one chunk castle keep. It's the perfect small castle build complete with towers, a dining hall and a bedchamber, and of course it all fits inside a single chunk. Most of this build will be stone brick, so grab some and outline the footprint of this castle. Start one block in from the edge and build 5x5 five five towers at the four corners, connected by four block long walls in the middle. Leave entrances in the centre of the front towers and on the inside corners of the back towers. It should look exactly like this when you're done. Build the towers at the front to be five blocks tall with spruce logs either side of the entrances and stone bricks around the outside. Put an inverted stone brick stair on the top of both logs and at each corner and then add stairs on top of those facing outwards. Add another inverted stair and a block above the entrance to form a doorway, and then do the same to the other tower, and swap a few supporting blocks out for polished andesite if you like. Build two pillars either side of the main entrance, connecting them with stairs, leaving room for a double door. Then lay spruce wood slabs flat across the top of the doorway, connecting the towers, and add stone slabs in the tops of the towers. We're going to add an access ladder to one of them later, but leave the other one sealed off. Then add an archway over the doorway using stone brick stairs so that wooden slabs are concealed except for the central detail and add a spruce double door for that castle vibe. For the sake of adding some texture we're going to make this castle look like it's taken a beating swapping out cracked stone bricks here and there. Moss and vines would also work if you want an overgrown feel. Adding windows to the towers is as simple as putting in two stair blocks and a wooden trap door. The two back towers are going to be much taller so build them up to a height of 13 blocks. They're also going to have windows spaced apart by a single block. The pattern is block, stair, trapdoor, stair, block, stair, trapdoor, stair. We'll also pop an inverted stair on each plain block and repeat this on each of the outward faces of the towers. We can add cracked or mossy bricks again to vary the texture, but swapping out some of the stone bricks for stair blocks gives the illusion that some of the bricks have fallen out over time and could make it look like you could climb the tower from the outside. Inside the castle boundary, we'll add doors to the corners of each tower and build up the wall on either side, leaving room for a little detail here with stairs and trap doors. Windows would also look good facing the front of the castle, and we can use the same stairs we used on the front towers to detail the top here. We won't add stair blocks to these parts of the tower, just a few cracked bricks, and maybe some polished andesite blocks at the top for variety. The back wall is going to have a plus-shaped window in the centre, a gap on either side with some oak planks behind it, and a drainage hole for water to flow down into. We'll top this off with two smaller windows and some stairs. To stop all these grey blocks from feeling too dull, we'll add some oak stairs and spruce fences on each corner, as though they're reinforcing the tower structures. The side walls can be built up with an alternating pattern of polished andesite and stone brick, with some cracks thrown in for good measure and topped off with stairs. Mirror the same pattern on the opposite wall, then let's do something with the inside of these large towers. Now you can do what you like with them, but I think this right hand tower could be used for storage. There's room for double chests and you could sneak in some lighting in the corner, or have it supported by a huge pillar of spruce wood. Add a platform every four blocks using oak slabs, then make the whole thing accessible by ladder, with trap doors if you want to seal each floor off. The opposite tower can have a tall spiral staircase revolving around a central spruce pillar and with oak slabs for the floor. Leave a flat platform at the top as long as you've got the headroom to walk back down again. Five blocks up each of the back towers break a hole you can use to connect them to the front towers. You could connect them using stairs or slabs, but we're going to use oak logs to look like beams for the room below. Build out the ceiling of the dining hall with oak stairs and slabs, adding wooden beams every few blocks so the ceiling looks supported. Extend the walls out from the towers a little as they're going to shape the space above the dining hall into a bedroom. Going back to our stone bricks, we're going to add a line along the back of these spruce slabs, then build a wall that's curved inwards here. This space next to the log walkways can now be sealed off with stone brick and trap doors. We'll frame out a central window here and fill it in with iron bars, since using glass wouldn't quite fit the castle aesthetic. Topping it off with stairs, we can also add some logs and chiselled stone every other block so you can see the depth of the wall from further away, otherwise all this stone brick is just going to blend together. 
These new blocks will support archways leading out onto the ramparts at the front. Alternating wood and stone buttons could be another nice textural detail here. The stairs on the side wall can be turned into windows if we add some inverted stairs one block back, perfect to shoot arrows from the castle walls. Finally, we can add the roof onto the bed chamber, sloping it upwards from the side walls and adding a raised section towards the back. By now, your build should look like this. The outside is more or less done, so it's time to think about what we can do with the interior. As I mentioned earlier, the left-hand tower is just going to have an access ladder, but the right-hand tower can have something more interesting. A little market stall complete with a crafting table, a chest, and a villager to trade with, RPG style. Now for the details, starting with the dining hall. First of all, we'll add some meat, slow roasting over a coal pit at the back, using magma blocks and netherrack. Don't add actual fire here unless you've got fire tick turned off, or it'll spread to the wooden ceiling. Castles would have sawdust or sand on the floor to dry up any spilled food and drink, so we'll use a mixture of sand, sandstone and inverted sandstone stairs to texture the floor. Endstone or endstone brick could also be mixed in here if you like. We'll create two high-backed chairs with jungle wood at the end of a long table. A few more oak stairs thrown in for good measure, and we could also put trapdoors above the doorway. Chests, shulker boxes, or crafting tables will look good as crates, and a few flower pots around the table look great as mugs. I'm also going to put a cauldron of water over here by the roasting meat, and pistons or note blocks will also make good looking boxes. If you want some skylight in your dining hall you can leave this open, but I'm going to seal it off with oak slabs. Outside the main door we'll add a path made of stone bricks and path blocks. It'll help to light the entrance with some torches supported by cobblestone walls. The spiral staircase in this tower goes up, but it could also go down into a crypt or a potion brewing room blocked off with an iron door. I'll leave that one up to you. The bed chamber can be kept simple. Two beds with some bookshelves either side as a nightstand, maybe a couple of armour stands for decoration, and some red banners up as curtains. We'll add a carpet too, and maybe some potted plants beside the bed. On the outside, the keep can be decorated with your banner, and if you need any banner designs, I have a couple of tutorials that will help with that. Last of all, let's blend the castle into the environment with some leaves, ferns and other plants, and you're ready to rule over your own Minecraft kingdom. Thanks for watching this one chunk tutorial. This video was made with the support of my amazing group of patrons. Head over to patreon.com slash to check out the awesome rewards. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, check out my other tutorials, and subscribe if you want to see more Minecraft videos in future. My name has been Pixelriffs, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.